We recently visited the Des Moines Museum in Greenville. Today it's known as one of the largest manufacturers of band uniforms. But in the beginning it was known for, well, let's see. The company was founded in 1892 by Ed DeMolin, who was a local photographer. He was also a gadget guy. He loved to tinker with things. At the same time, there was a local man named William Northcott, who was our Bond County State's Attorney, but more importantly, he was the head counsel or national president of the Modern Woodmen of America Fraternal Order. Northcott was looking for ways to get people to join the Modern Woodmen chapters across the United States. So he went to Ed DeMolin one day and he said, Ed, can you think of anything we can do to encourage people to attend our, or join our MWA chapters? And Ed got together with his brothers, U.S. and Erastus, and the three of them began dreaming up lodge initiation devices, and that's how the DeMolin company got their start. The Molin Company had patents on about 30 different lodge initiation devices. This particular piece is called the lifting and spraying machine. It's a strength tester. The way it was introduced in the lodge was the lodge initiate was told that we're going to test your strength to make sure that you're man enough to belong to this lodge. And so the uh, poor fellow would pick up on these handles expecting to test his strength and what he did, he would shoot water in his face and it fired a blank cartridge. The museum has about 17 different fraternal lodge initiation devices in our collection, and it's what really it seems to attract people to the museum because they're very quirky, they're fun, uh, they're weird, and they're uh, very rare. This is the DeMolin Lung Tester. It was one of their biggest sellers. If you think back to the turn of the century when tuberculosis and other illnesses were very prevalent, it would make sense that a lodge that sold life insurance, like the modern Woodman of America, would want to test a person's health and test their lungs. He would blow into the mouthpiece, and when he did, he would shoot flour back into his face, and again, it fired a blank cartridge. We have three of the DeMolin Lodge initiation goats on display in this area. The person that was being initiated was told, tonight you have to ride the goat. And the guy would have no idea what that meant. They blindfolded him and they placed him on the top of one of these goats and gave him a goat ride. The end result is that the gentleman would usually end up on the floor. So in the corral we have three examples of DeMolin goats. At the turn of the century there were dozens and dozens and, and literally dozens of fraternal orders that men could belong to. And the DeMolin brothers were at the right place at the right time uh, that they were able to capitalize on what I would call the fraternal craze of the 1890s through the early 1900s. And the company did big business and by 1900 they had a very large uh, company. They also made regalia for the fraternal orders and uh, later they added band uniforms, graduation caps and gowns, choir robes, and church and lodge furniture. And one of my favorites is this chair from the early 1900s. Another example of the great woodworking that the DeMolin factory could do. But there's a little bit of a catch to this story. This is a trick chair. So if you were to sit in it, the chair collapses, it fires a blank, rings a bell, but also there's a very small wire that's woven through the seat of this chair that could be hooked to a magneto. You could crank it up and when you sat down you also got electric shock. The museum's been very well received locally and the best part is the folks that have come in from not only out of town but out of state. Those who are familiar with fraternal history and the lodge initiation devices, they know how rare they are and how unusual it is to find this many of them in one location. For more information about the DeMolin Museum, go to their Facebook page or call 618-664-4115.